Hey, what's up guys? This is Oakley Hadef and welcome to Teach FE Productions. Today we're going to be analyzing Destiny's story uh, and making connections in terms of something that we're going to dub the Seven Heavens Theory. So this was brought to my attention by Adam J. 4 and so he's a member of the community, put up this cool post where he um, participated in uh, Bungie's essentially mini game, I guess you could call it. Um, and so I'll go into that right now. So Bungie, as of February 11th, Bungie started an ARG, which is an alternate reality game for Destiny. The game was on a website called alphaloopy.bungie.net. And on that site, what they would do is each day release a puzzle, which was a, a geomantic symbol. And so what happened is um, basically members of the community had to go there, solve the puzzle. Once it was solved, Bungie would release some information. And so um, what we're going to be doing is drawing essentially the conclusions from the uh, the puzzles that were unlocked and linking that to Destiny. So basically I'm going to start this whole premise by stating that what the connection is going to be is we're going to connect each of the days to each of the geomantic symbols. Each of the geomantic symbols is going to be connected to one of the planets. And then um, what Bungie released essentially was a poem to go along with each of these symbols. So I'm going to analyze how does that poem relate to that particular planet. And then also I'm going to connect it to what the ancients uh, associated with that planet. So that's where the seven heavens theory comes in. Essentially, Bungie releases these seven geomantic symbols associated with seven planets. So the way it ends up being unlocked is Monday is to the moon, Tuesday to Mars, Wednesday to Mercury, Thursday to Jupiter, Friday to Venus, Saturday to Saturn, and Sunday to the Sun. So what we'll be doing is analyzing each of the planets, how they're connected to the poem, how that poem also relates to how the ancients viewed each of these planets. So, um, for example, if any of you um, have heard about the Ptolemaic understanding of the universe, that's essentially that the Earth was at the center, and then revolving around it were the various planets. So the ancients, um, so that's ancient cultures, uh, Christianity and different cultures, believe that each of these planets had its own um, beings, they had stories about it. And so what I'm going to be doing is kind of relating all that, bringing it together, and seeing how does that relate to destiny. So right here, I'm going to show you just uh, briefly what happens when all of these symbols were unlocked by the community. So each of them initially came with a symbol. Once that was unlocked, you got the poem. And along with it was a cool background with the stars and all that stuff. And what's even cooler is once this was all unlocked, it came together to form this kind of extraordinary art here with all these interconnected um, symbols you have the big geometric shapes um, and this is really cool it looks amazing and along with this once this was unlocked Bungie released uh, essentially a sound clip from the game uh, and then also what they released was this concept art or this art piece here so this is really cool I was really really surprised to see the amount of depth that went into this because you don't really hear too much about this Bungie has this this awesome um, ability to weave in all these narratives, this sense of mystery and awe, and I'm happy uh, to see them bring this to Destiny. You know, it's really cool, and I would, you know, recommend that you guys check that out. Otherwise, stay tuned, and we'll be delving into the details and the parallels. So now looking at the first one, which was Monday, Monday to the Moon. The symbol, if I can remind you again, is populace, uh, and that uh, means the people. So. Um, right off the start, you know, the moon is closest to the earth, the people there making a reference that, you know, maybe because it's closest to the earth, it's, it was, uh, as earth developed, it was considered, you know, part of the general body of earth and earth expanded first to the moon, blah, 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 whatever in this future scenario. So that's kind of my take on it. But if you looked at the, the mention in the text of the poem here, it talks about the best voices, uh, those that truly matter are never heard, uh, never allow themselves to be heard. Um, and that's an important lesson. Then they go on and talk about um, only the trusted few can absorb what is necessary. Uh, they talk about enlightenment and all this stuff. So what that kind of leads uh, us to believe is they're talking about a select few important lessons. So that kind of all refers to back to the idea of the concept of destiny, which is the fact that you are a knight, you're a defender of the city, you have certain abilities and powers, and so maybe you as a personal character in this world do have those um, certain attributes and as they say right here in the poem only the trusted few can absorb what is necessary so I think that's a reference to the player um, and maybe the fact that this takes place on the moon means that maybe uh, initially you will have one of the er early levels in the campaign take place on the moon maybe that's where you do some of your training maybe that's where you unlock your first you know certain abilities and stuff like that so that's kind of the connection that I make 
to the moon and the game. Now also, um, Adam makes the connection uh, in the following way to the theory that basically connects it to the Seven Heavens mythology and in that it says, um, according to one of the articles um, he forwarded to me, uh, there are seven Earths. The first is called Ramaka, beneath which is the barren wind which can be bridled by no fewer than 70,000 angels. With this wind, God destroyed the people of Ad. The inhabitants of Ramaka are a nation called Muwashim, upon whom is everlasting torment and divine retribution. So that's a quote, um, and that comes from uh, a, an article, and we tried to follow in the details of that, that kind of quotes the beliefs of the ancients. Now this is back to, I think, um, either early Christianity, or it does have some uh, Arabic or undertones, or I'm not really sure what the origin of that is exactly, but the connection is that in that reference it talks to the moon um, being, you know, covered with winds, and that does match up with the winds they talk about in the poem. And also in this, they talk about a destroyed people. Um, if you look at the whole story of destiny, you know, it's it's humankind being destroyed by aliens, being pushed back, so that matches up as well. And additionally, in this, it talks about um, th there's a people who are destroyed, and it says everlasting torment and divine retribution. So that kind of matches up to images we've seen of something called the Hellmouth. Now, we don't quite know what that is yet, but, I mean, given the name Hellmouth, something terrible happened there, um, and it talked about, you know, divine retribution and all that stuff happening on the moon, so perhaps the Hellmouth was, it, it's the connection there that has something terrible happened, and the fact that there's a Hellmouth, maybe that's where it came from, that's where the, the divine retribution came from. Now we're going to be moving on to Tuesday, um, which is associated with Mars, and I think this is really interesting, there's a lot to go into in terms of this. So, first of all, uh, on Tuesday, Bungie released this symbol here. Uh, the community connected this with the, geo the geomantic symbol, uh, which stands for, uh, in, in Latin means, uh, the boy. And what the boy is associated with is, uh, of course, the planet Mars. And what it has connotations of is primarily aggression and passion, male stereotypes of being aggressive. Um, and eventually, of course, the, you know, the Romans and the Greeks, uh, the god Mars, Mars of war, um, all of this is kind of built into uh, this planet, the whole theme of war and battle and all that stuff. And what that is actually um, is it connects it pretty much directly to what we've seen in terms of concept art for Mars. What we've seen right now is this exclusion zone right here, and this is uh, described to be controlled by the Cabal um, in constant fighting between the humans and the Cabal for control of this area. So. That brings up the theme of constant warfare, you know, the fighting, uh, the, the warlike aggression. Um, more importantly, the alien race that we see right here, their banner right there, that's for the Cabal. Now, the Cabal are the alien race, which are these huge kind of brutish characters with, decked out with big guns, lots of armor. They're supposed to be the tanks, and so that matches up pretty directly with the description of, uh, you know, primarily aggression and warlike nature that's associated with this symbol here on Tuesday. So that's the first connection that comes along with this geomantic symbol. Um, of course, Bungie also released a poem along with this. So in the poem, uh, it says, Your voice flows across the red rock and through the dead valley, speaking in code and goads. So right here you can see it talking about red rock, so if obviously Mars is red. It talks about ancient volcanoes, uh, all this stuff in here. Um, and then towards the bottom, it, it starts saying, Every moment matters, and from a great distance in the midst of a thousand careful disaster, you watch the transformation with your own eyes. The rose has blossomed. So that can be taken a couple ways. Basically, uh, a transformation, uh, the rose blossoming. So something is coming to fruition, something's changing, um, and that can either be taking in a positive or a negative connotation. Uh, and I'm going to read to you, uh, this is from the analysis made by Adam. He quotes some elements from uh, different texts that were about the ancients' beliefs of what this, uh, this level of the heavens was. So uh, I'll quote you from two of the different places. The first one quotes, the second earth is Kalada, wherein are the inhabitants of torture for the inhabitants of hell. There dwells a, nature, a, a nation called Temis, whose food is their own flesh and whose drink is their own blood. So that's pretty cryptic. Um, but what you see when you connect that to the poem is in the midst of a thousand careful disasters, you watch the transformation with your own eyes. So we have references of transformation, we have trans, uh, references to drinking your own blood, uh, eating of your own flesh, 
And now connect that to the fact that we have seen zombie-like characters for Destiny. So I think it's possible that that makes a connection to the, the alleged space zombies. That maybe beneath the bowels of Mars, that's where we see these space zombies inhabiting. Which kind of makes sense. Um, especially since we've seen gameplay of a dungeon down there. Um, maybe the transformation is that you're witnessing, as, as is said in the poem, is the transformation of these zombies. Uh, so that that's another interesting connection. So not only do we have the connection of Mars, a warlike, to the Cabal, to the to the to the fighting essentially that we're seeing there, but also we have this transformation and the connections uh, in terms of the the belief about this level of heaven it being a, a place to torture people of, in hell, and that there are these weird uh, people, a nation who eats their own flesh and drinks their own blood. So that's another reference to another alien race uh, in Destiny, which is the zombies. So I think that makes it very interesting. And um, yeah, and we'll of course uh, unlock more uh, as we move along. We are now on Wednesday, uh, and this was attached to the uh, this symbol here, and this is Albus. So if we look into what this means, Albus means white. So it refers to essentially um, a figure represents an upright upright glass or goblet, uh, and is good in most situations, especially when uh, with figures. In, in company and stuff like that, but itself as a figure is weak. Um, and this is kind of interesting if we look at this because uh, the goblet and in terms of the references in the poem, it talks about it, it, this is a place that used to be bountiful and all that stuff until all of a sudden it left. So that kind of makes sense with the definition of Albus, which is the goblet, you know, talking about supplying something, you drink from it, you can, you can, uh, you can live off of it. It's something that gives you uh, the contents of the inside. So before, I think what we had on this planet was a place where maybe humans developed a settlement and they could draw lots of resources. Uh, it was bountiful and all this stuff, but then something happened. Um, and the figure itself, as I mentioned, is weak, so maybe now it's a weak planet. And if we go ahead and look at the poem, the poem talks about uh, you remember hot oceans, nourishing atmosphere, but something transpired, kicked what was wet and fertile in a space. So this used to play, be a place with lots of great value. As I said, it's nourishing all this stuff, then something went wrong. Um, and also, if we take a look at basically the what the ancients thought of this, the ancients have references to this place as the third heaven, as a place where the Garden of Eden was, um, a potentially a place where there was a tree of life. So this area here actually coincides pretty nicely with what we've seen in terms of concept art uh, of a place that's been referred to as the Black Garden. You can see right here it's a really cool place. Um, obviously it can support all these different plants and stuff and it's a big open garden. Perhaps, you know, references to the Garden of Eden being here. It does certainly look uh, a bit Edenic but also at the same time, as was mentioned in the poem, uh, something happened, something went wrong. Uh, the 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 geomantic symbol itself is weak. Something something happened here in that it lost its power, it lost its value, and so that's why you can see in this concept art, it's kind of dark in the background. Something went wrong here. So I think we can imagine once we go visit this planet that there will be something off about it. Um, now, what we look uh, when we look back at the the poem about this, it talks about. Uh, sort of the answer to why all this happened and all that stuff. It says, the answer feels like the iron heart of a collapsed star, and you realize the union between the past and the future is now. Um, and it's interesting that they talk about the union of the past and the future, and all this stuff coming together right now at the present, is one of the aliens that was mentioned, one of the main guys we've seen, is the Vex. And these guys have been uh, stated to be essentially time-traveling robots. So we have this area here that used to be bountiful, have a lot of resources. Then all of a sudden it stopped, and then it talks about the past and the future coming together in the present now. So maybe the cause for this sort of destruction of this planet, uh, whatever happened to it, is maybe caused by the Vex. So maybe we can see the Vex having their home world here. I mean, maybe not their home world, but at least a significant base. Um, this is a concept art here of you can see human players fighting against the Vex, so maybe this is gameplay that's taking place on Mercury, um, and maybe in the background at least we know that's one of their bases, uh, that's, a, that's an alien uh, fortress that the players can go in and raid, so maybe we will see that on Mercury. So moving on to Thursday, Thursday is going to be associated with Jupiter, the geomantic figure here is Aquis, uh, Aquisito, and in Latin that means gain. 
So the two, uh, or at least if you look at the uh, the symbols right there, what it's supposed to be is uh, a representation of two bowls or cups turned upright, and it's supposed to be sort of a, a positive uh, symbol in most situations. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm not quite sure what to make from that, besides maybe something good happened for humanity here. But uh, when we look at the bungee poem, of course, I think that'll differ. But anyways, as I said, this is associated with Jupiter. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the bungee poem. So the poem starts off saying, even the largest body lets itself be pushed where it needs to be. So the largest body, obviously Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system. Um, and here it's talking about, it lets itself be pushed where it needs to be. Seduced into nice, warm, loving orbits, persistence is the key. So I can take that two ways. So maybe the largest body uh, lets itself be pushed where it needs to be. And that's just talking about the, its natural orbit in the solar system and stuff like that. Or perhaps something is controlling it and sort of maneuvering it. Um, and when you look at the second uh, the second part of the poem, in the middle of the poem, sea floors will transform and then yank themselves skyward, shattering the icy crust as new worlds awaken inside the swirling depths. You build your homes of ocean laid over stone, giant and tiny surrounding this half-born sun ripped by storms and supersonic winds. So you look at this right here. And something's wrong. Something's bizarre here. The the world is being ripped apart. Um, things are happening. It's very active. Um, and maybe that's just the nature of what happens on uh, on Jupiter. I'm not quite sure. Sorry, but there's a lot of stuff going on. So either this is sort of natural to what happens on the planet, or perhaps it's because of something that's happened, uh, alien interference there, or something that's happened with the story in order to change maybe the orbit of Jupiter, or something's gone wrong. Next, what's most interesting in this poem is uh, this quote here. You deliver your last orders to an army that needs nothing anymore. Not instruction, courage, or even prayers, and then you hide again. In ecstasy, they search for you, finding nothing but dense quiet dropping from the stars. So this could be taken a couple ways. So initially when I thought about the army that needs nothing more, what came to mind was maybe an autonomous army, an army of robots, um, they don't need instruction, courage, or even prayers. So maybe they're just sitting there and they're um, they're programmed to do something. And all of a sudden, you can awaken them. So maybe you travel to Jupiter at some point in the, in the story together. You know, to to awaken this army that you can use for your purposes. I, I'm not quite sure what to make of it. Um, so maybe this is another race of aliens we haven't heard of yet. A potential ally you can make use of. Um, and it, it's interesting where it says in ecstasy they search for you. So maybe this is a uh, maybe this is a group of humans that have been left out here and they've been cut off from Earth. So they're looking for you. Uh, and so maybe the inhabitants of Jupiter are looking to make contact with the, with the humans, but they can't. And so they're looking for you. And maybe you're, you'll travel there as a player and unlock maybe their help in fighting back against the aliens. So that's, that's my take on it. Um, additionally, when you look at what Adam brought up, um, he did a little bit of research. And uh, this is going to be quoting sort of one of those ancient beliefs about this level of the uh, of the Earth. So the fourth Earth is called Haraba, wherein dwell the snakes of hell, which are as large as mountains. Each snake has fangs like tall palm trees, and if they were to strike the hugest mountain with their fangs, it would be leveled to the ground. Uh, the inhabitants of this Earth are a nation called uh, Jilla, and they have no eyes, hands, or feet, but have wings like bats, and die only of old age. So I'm not quite sure how strong this connection is, but you know it does hint at the fact that maybe there is some connection, maybe we'll see a new alien there. And according to this theory right here, it hints that maybe that new alien uh, has the ability to fly, which actually considering um, Bungie's trying to implement all these new alien races, I wouldn't be surprised if they had a flying race um, because that would kind of round out uh, a different set of characters, which I'm sure Bungie will do because they want their diversity. So maybe this is where we'll see a new breed of aliens come in. Moving on, we are now going to have Friday, which was connected with the geomantic symbol here. This is going to be uh, the planet Venus, and it's connected to the symbol Puella, which in Latin means the girl. So as opposed to Mars, which was warlike, this one is going to represent more uh, peace and passivity. Um, and now looking over at Bungie's poem, uh, you see history hidden between the barren rocks and within the high acid clouds. You see ruin emerging from where it has always been, ready to claim its birthright. Sunlight is star, the fierceness is chilled and thin, made sweet again. A new ocean emerges, thick and salty from the hot uh, and hot from springs and geysers that drench the dead ground. So the symbol itself is peace and passivity, but here we see that there is kind of an evil emerging from this. Uh, you see uh, basically um, ruin emerging from the ground and all of this 
threatening to destroy an already seemingly destroyed world and then in the poem it says you wonder will this world's second birth be its finest you draw deep inside seeking direction truth dot 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 so right here i guess uh, if we want to make a connection it, it's kind of hard to make one at this point besides uh, the fact that we have here uh, the idea of peace and passivity, but here we have essentially ruin starting. So maybe there's going to be some sort of sense, as the poem says, of rebirth. Something's happening here where there is maybe peace emerging here. Maybe this is a place where um, there is a, there's a peace between the humans and the aliens here. Maybe that's where you're able to form an alliance of some sort. Who knows? It talks about rebirth. So maybe at this point you're able to rebuild part of uh, humankind's former glory here. Who knows, uh, maybe you go here to reclaim something. So that's going to be about as much as I think we can infer about this part. But again, guys, in the comments below, you know, you can leave your own interpretations and I'd be happy, actually intrigued to see what you guys think. We now move on to Saturday. This is going to be connected to Saturn. And the geomantic symbol this time is going to be uh, Tristitia, which is Latin for sorrow. So obviously, um, I mean, obviously, I'm <laughs> I'm just gonna inform you. The figure resembles a broken arch or a stake being driven to the ground into the ground. So in most cases, it's a bad symbol, and as I said, it it does have connotations of mourning and sadness, pain and suffering. So now let's go ahead and analyze kind of the connection that I draw at first. So the mourning and sadness, I think, relates to the concept art we see here. This is uh, presumably uh, about the rings of Saturn. And what we see here is, uh, as has been said, the remains of a destroyed human fleet. Here, this ship is the uh, the Cassini. So, I mean, the sorrow and the sadness, I think, is, is probably pretty well connected to what you can see here. The remains of a large destroyed human fleet, maybe making a last stand here, trying to hold off the aliens, but it was crushed and destroyed. Uh, and that it, that leads to the sadness and the symbol associated with this. Uh, so I think that's actually pretty interesting that they they have mentioned there's a destroyed human fleet. And according to some videos, it seems like you can visit it. And then that's going to be on Saturn, which is associated with sadness. So it all kind of has this um, this effect where it does make sense. Now, if we look at the poem itself, it talks about uh, you have been pushed to this place for a reason. So maybe you know you have a mission to go there. Maybe you're going to retrieve something in the destroyed human fleet. There's a reason for you to go back to this place of sorrow. Then it talks a bit about uh, a cold giant showing its night face to you, distant moonside past, the lies comments. It's all pretty hard to understand. Um, but what's interesting is towards the bottom, what it mentions is uh, eyes that never close gaze everywhere and at everything. You see them in their hiding places, and they can see you too. So that's that's maybe the in terms of when you go here, there are scavengers. That's what that's what I think because this is a destroyed human fleet. There's maybe lots of spare parts, and what we've seen in one of the videos is if you look at the the left hand corner, you can see an enemy there. So the humans are walking around. You can also see an enemy there. So that makes me kind of wonder. You know, maybe the different races are coming here to salvage parts of the fleet. Um, maybe there's scavengers here and that that kind of makes sense when you look at the end of the poem poem excuse me that says eyes that never close gaze everywhere and at everything you see them in their hiding places so maybe there's like you know scavengers and space pirates or whatever moving around salvaging different parts uh, and there's lots of different people mixing here trying to get their bits and pieces of what they need um, at, at the same time um, they gaze everywhere and at everything so maybe it's a new race that's here but I think um, Maybe it's maybe there's even inhabitants that are living inside these destroyed ships. But for the most part, I think it does tie uh, in general to the sadness of the symbol and the fact there's a human fleet there uh, kind of completes the, the, the connection for me. Now, finally, we come to Sunday, which is obviously associated with the sun. The geomantic symbol is going to be the Fortuna Major, and this is Latin for the greater fortune. And the figure here represents blessings growing from the earth and being fruitful in the air. So this symbol in all situations is supposed to be good. And in terms of the, the mythology or biblical references, the seventh heaven is reputed to be the holiest of all the heavens. And it, can tr it contains the throne of glory as attended by the seven archangels. Uh, seventh heaven is home of God and his throne. You have all these references to the, the seraphim, the cherubim, and the, the ophanim, which is all the different levels of the angels being there. So this is a place... Uh, of happiness, of unity, of power. 
And when you go ahead and you look at the poem, it talks about you arriving to the sun. Um, it, it's making a sort of a radiation noise, and it says there must be meaning in its roar. You listen hard and carefully, and sometimes a lucid melody seems to rise out of a random noise, pulling your mind into moments where it seems possible. The answers are about to be revealed. Joy builds, and the first hope in ages transforms you. So maybe at some point you have to go visit the sun or get close to it, learn its secrets, Maybe there's something uh, you learn here, uh, as it implies, and it transforms you. It's the first hope in ages. So obviously, the the overarching story of Destiny is humanity had a golden age, then it was pushed back, pushed all the way back to Earth to this last defense, saved by the Traveler, and then now you have to go back and push back uh, and save your race against the aliens. And of course, that's a situation with little to no hope. And here it references that finally the sun might hope, uh, might bring hope. Uh, and it, it, what it says at the bottom, it's, um, it seems important, even critical, to tell every star from here to the black between the galaxies that you are strong again. So maybe this is later in the campaign where you arrive at the sun. You At this point, you've, uh, you've been transformed as a character. Maybe you've leveled up. Maybe you've gained power experience. You've moved the human race forward. At this point, you are strong. Uh, you gain additional strength or something from arriving at the sun, from going there, and then at this point you go into the galaxy and you show, you prove to the aliens, you prove to the world that you are strong again. Um, so that about wraps it up for this whole dynamic, um, linking the ARG to the planets and then looking into how that relates to possible parts of the game. So I know this this has been lengthy guys, but there is a lot of information in here and I actually really enjoyed looking into this. I hope you did as well. In the comments below, go ahead and share what you think. Of course, this is a running theory and as a theory, you know, anyone can basically put what they think. Um, so I would be happy to hear what you guys think about what we, we've done so far. Um, thanks to Adam for sharing this with me and as we get more news, you know, we'll make references back to this, seeing how it fits in. And of course, this is not set in stone. It's just our general impressions on what we think so anyways guys i hope you enjoyed uh stay tuned we'll be bringing more stuff like this where we not only bring you the hard facts but we also analyze what might be in the game in the future so anyways uh this has been oakley Hadif, and i'm signing out peace out guys